Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So today I wanted to talk about follow through. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, overcoming your limitation, but also where our, uh, our, our weird beliefs come from. So as you're, as you're in creation, as, as you're wanting to turn a thought into a thing, turn it, turn it, create, put something into reality, you have an idea, it's a, it's a true choice, there's no ego attachment to it, you're not problem solving with it, you're just saying, that is what I would like to create. So you think, hey, I, I might create a book or I might create an app or I might create a, uh, a business or I might create a relationship or I might, whatever it is. And so what happens is, is as, you, as you're moving towards it, at some point, doubt sets in. Who agrees with me? Disbelief, uncertainty. Feelings of not able to do it, not worthy, not smart enough, not capable. Isn't it true? And you got to ask, okay, well, why is that a structure that, you know, I just say, everyone says, yes, that, that is what happens. Why does that happen? Because it doesn't seem to be something we enjoy. Or maybe it is. You see, it's like, why, why does that happen? You know, so, so you think about, you know, I want to create this, this thing. And, and then as I'm creating it, some fears, some worries, some uncertainties, they pop in uh, out of seemingly nowhere. Is it true that at times you can feel really like that's what I'm going to do, really confident and really clear? And then other times you can feel really confused and, and completely doubtful or, or downright pessimistic that it can even happen, right? And so it's, it's a strange thing to think about, isn't it? It's like, well, where does that come from? What's it all about? See, your self-conscious identity has decided how the world is. And it, and it did this when it, when, it, when it realized it was an individual. So when you became an individual with, with your name, and you got given a name and that, that was a, you know, a sound vibration we used to call you. And we said, that's you. And you realize you're a collection of, of information of, of hydrogen and carbon and nitrogen and atoms and, and molecules and consciousness. And you go, well, that, 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 that's who I am. And I, I'm separate from other things. What you, what you realized is that there was a, a way the world is a way the world is. And what that means is you realize there was a way to get certain things that you wanted. And there was also a way to get or experience things that you didn't want. And that set up a rule structure for you. So let, let's all uh, uh, realize that there are some things we really want. We want admiration or respect from others, connection. We want safety. We want love. We want to, uh, you know, to have choices. And we go, well, that's those are those are good. We don't. One of the one of the things we don't want is we don't want to be rejected, left alone, be hungry. We don't want those things. And so, so we decided this is good and this is bad. This is good and this is bad. And then we decided what we had to be in order to have the good and avoid the bad. We decided what we must be to get the good and avoid the bad. So we decided, and, and we can boil them down to basically six, right? We decided we needed to be good enough or we needed to become worthy. We decided we needed to become perfect or significant or that we needed to become uh, more capable uh, or that we needed to always belong to this tribe. So we decided what we needed to be, and everyone get this, we decided what the ideal was. We decided on the ideal. Now, as we decided, well, I need to be this. See, see the rules starting to come out. We say, this is a good thing. 
And people who are this get that good thing. And people who are not this get this bad thing. Does that make sense? That's what we decided. And so we decided I need to be this. I need to be this. And in the decision of we need to be this, we picked up the other end of the stick that said, we're not that. I need to be seen in order to be loved. I need, to, therefore, I'm not seen. I need to be and do good enough work. I need to do good enough work. I need to show people how good enough my work is because I'm inherently not good enough. I need to be worthy. If I can be worthy, if I can spread, if I can do worthy things, if I can be a worthy person, then I'll get what I want. Therefore, right now, I'm not worthy. I've got to be it. I must become it. I got to be perfect. There's a perfect way. I must be perfect. Therefore, right now, I'm not perfect. I must be it. And, and, and this forms our orientation, doesn't it? This forms our way of um, viewing the world or living in the world. And that forms our orientation, doesn't it? And so what happens is the identity actually becomes addicted to that orientation. It says, that is who I am. And it actually becomes very happy with being that. That is me. This is me. This is how the world is. The world is this. And I'm going to try to get there. Buddha said the last thing human beings give up uh, is their suffering. Because without their suffering, they wouldn't know who they are. It's an interesting thing to think about. So, so, so here we are, and, and we're in the world, and we're going, right, this is, this is, uh, this is my, my cross to bear. This is what I must get to. This is it. And so then we design a, a goal that we want to achieve. And then this is where it gets sneaky. Because the identity is so committed to that way of being that you're not good enough, that you're not, because it's so committed to that. As you move towards something that is designed to solve that problem, you can never have it. Because if you were to finally solve the problem that you're not good enough, that you solve the problem that you are good enough, the identity or self-conscious no longer knows who it would be. So as it goes towards this, this goal, strangely, it throws up the one thing that you want to avoid. So you're trying to create something to finally be good enough. And as you're going towards it, all that you feel and experience is these ideas that you're not good enough. So quite an, it's quite an interesting thing, isn't it? So the ego's in this weird game that it, could, it is not allowed to solve. Because if it was to solve the game, it would no longer know who it is. I'm going to create millions of dollars to finally be worthy. But if I was actually to do that, well, then who would I be? I'm going to create an amazing uh, relationship to finally belong and be loved. But if I was to actually do that, if I was actually to belong, well, then who am I now? Hmm. So it creates this little game. It creates this little game of chasing something it can never, ever have. Because if it was to have it, it would no longer be itself anymore. Who finds this fascinating? And who knows it's true? Who goes, wow, this is really interesting. Isn't it, isn't it true, right? It's like, this is quite, this is true. Something to ponder, isn't it? 
like, hmm, that's quite a, quite a thing. I'm doing this, well, most of us are doing this to achieve a thing that if we were to have it, well, who would we be? And so this is where the, the truth comes in. Because let me ask you, and let's just do this experiment with me. Just imagine lining up a thousand babies, a thousand, you know, beautiful babies, just of every race, of, of every, just every baby, just, and they're just beautiful, you know, every gender or in between, just, just everything. Just imagine a thousand of them lined up in front of you. It's quite a hilarious thought, you know, all these babies. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not sitting still because they're babies. And now ask me, which one of them is not worthy of love? of happiness, of joy. You point out the one that's not worthy. You show me the one that's not good enough to, to live a great human experience. Oh, the disabled one? Get out of here. Get out of here. They're good enough for sure. In fact, they can do and create more joy than able-bodied people. In fact, that, an able-bodied one over there isn't going to create a half. They're all good enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, these ones have different intellects. Oh, they're, they're born in different families. Well, you tell me, which one doesn't belong? Which one doesn't belong? Point out the one that doesn't belong, at least to the human race. How could it not belong? It, it, look, you know, it looks just like that. How does it not belong? Which one of these is not so significant or which one's more significant than the other? You guys get it, hey? Which one's more capable? Oh, well, that one's genius. Well, which one's more capable to have a happy life? Which is the overall success, isn't it? Which one's more capable of having a happy life? Oh, Chris, that one's the that one's the capable genius. Yeah, but that that one can't do relationships. Which one's more capable? Hey, you know, you, like, let's look at them all, and then, and as you're looking at them all, no that they're all about to tell themselves a big lie and make their whole life up about the lie is that there's something that they must fill up that's outside of them. So let me ask you, you looking at these beautiful babies, what's the truth? What was that, Alison? Alison says... The, the one with the wisest parents has the best chance of figuring out, nah, nah, I don't, I don't buy it. In fact, uh, I think sometimes people can have super wise parents and kids just don't listen. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Not in, not in the day and age of free internet. I don't buy it. Now, when you, when you look at them all and you realize they're all about to have their, their experience of how they somehow don't have it. Yeah, good point, John. And then as you're thinking about all these babies and all of, the, all of these, these kids and they all, they're, they're all there, I want you to superimpose yourself into that group. And as you superimpose yourself into that group, you have to accept all the good things you've just said about, said about that group. See, so, so as you look, what's the truth? You know, what's the truth? Because Human, a successful human being is about finding meaning in life, the pursuit of happiness, finding meaning. And that every single one of them has the ability to find, find a meaningful existence. See, the, the, only, the only way 
to successfully have what you desire is to have it now. Because if you can't find it now, you will not find it. True? Because once you have it now, then the, the worry or that your ego or self-conscious has is no longer there because you already have it. The worry is created from the idea that you're not it and that you're going to get it that you're going to change does that make sense that's where all the negative belief comes from so here's the truth the truth is the opposite the truth is the opposite there is no way possible for you to be more capable you are completely capable of creating whatever you want and finding the other humans who are also incredibly capable to help you do it. Whether that's intimate relationships or, or community partners or friends or family. Is it, is it true? It's the truth is the opposite. There is actually no way to be more capable than you. How could you possibly be more? Oh, Chris, I'm not capable of having a healthy body. Have you seen what you've been able to create? Have you seen the 95% of your body that is healthy? The truth is actually the opposite. You can't be more good enough. How could you be more good enough? You can't be more good enough. Heck, you're a... You're a creative energy that collected a bunch of atoms and, and turned it into an existence. You can't be more good enough. You can't be more worthy. Can imagine that you can't be worthy of love or worthy of money. You can't be worthy of it. It's impossible. It's impossible. What a silly idea that is. Throw out any book that says you need to be worthy of anything. You're already worthy. How could you possibly be more worthy? You know, you, you can't. You can't be more significant than you allow yourself to feel. You can't belong any more or any less to your family. It doesn't even matter if you're adopted. You still belong. Doesn't matter. We all feel rejected, and that's a huge amount of rejection, but your DNA proves you still belong. You can't belong more. It's just how it is. Can't belong any more or less to, to, to uh, your family, to society. To You can't. There's no way to do it. We need to put down this idea that there's something outside that is more than now. Tara says we can't belong more, but we can have more. Have more of what? Have more of what? See, see, the, the, the thing is, is that once you realize that there's nothing that you need to uh, get that at, that's outside of you, that there's nothing you, you can get that will give you what you're looking for, when you realize it's you you're looking for. Once you realize that, all resistance to what you're creating is resolved because all resistance is, is birthed in the self-conscious idea of needing to stay the same and thinking that the result will change who you fundamentally are. So if you believe you're not enough and by having that you will be enough, there is a complete uh, disequilibrium between those two points, meaning your, your self-conscious will fight you for having that. Who's following it? Who's following it? It will fight you because it believes it's not that. That's set up. Is, is one of the most horrendous setups. And that's why we must all remember.
Because she's wrong, Karen. Is it true? It's just wrong, isn't it? Uh, and I won't, um, you guys who are here live can see, but many of the teachers won't tell you that. And I'm sorry that they, they're just bloody wrong. You know, no, there's no, there's no other way. There is, there isn't a, a and I'm not trying to be mean. I've, I'm wrong. I've been wrong all the time. Eh? Um, I don't, th I don't think so either charity, but if that was what was said, it's wrong. Hey, so. True. And, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, that's okay. No, I'm not. Oh, it's Brett. Hey, Brett. So, so how good, how good is, uh, how good is that? How good is that? It is is just to is just to realize the truth in that. And and guys, I can see in the chat box. Um, uh, many people say, "Well, I don't know if that's what that person said or what." I don't know, but if that was what was said, it's wrong. Can everyone appreciate that? If if, if that was said, then it's wrong. Um, yeah, true. Um, and, and so when we're creating, there's a really, 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 really boring aspect of creating, and that is following through. So most of your creations, you're not going to like this, but that they're not that exciting. because you already have it. They're not, they're not these, they're, they're, they're not that exciting setup that you think it's going to be. It's actually quite boring. But I'm using that word to try to trigger something in you because it's not boring. It's just, it's just, it's the same. And what I'm meaning is there's not a discernible difference. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. You, you, you start writing a book, you're writing the book, you finish the book, people buy the book. Woke up, do my recodes, play tennis, uh, hang out with people I care about. Do that no matter what. You see what I'm saying? It's the same. It's, it's, it's when you really understand that when you arrive, you must arrive before, that it's, it's, you're already it. You're already the all. Does this make sense, everyone? Is that you, you know, that, that it, it's just the same. You're just, you're just the same person. And they're just, they're just things that you're choosing to experience. Uh, but fundamentally, you, the bigger you, that's bigger than anything you're creating, it's just like, oh, and now I have that. That's great. Does that make sense? It, it, it's, it's, not that it's, uh, it's not that it's you. See, the, the, the part of you that thinks, when I have this, oh, my God, it'd be amazing, is it's it's a part of you that's experiencing it, it's the separation from it. Does that make sense? Is that that's feeling the separation. You're saying, I'm not it, and if I had it, things are going to be so amazing and glorious and these things. Those of you know this, if you've ever bought an expensive car or, or you know, uh, you know, you, when you first get in a relationship and then it's just a relationship or, you know, you start a new job. At the beginning, there might be a spike of hyper awareness. Well, this is new. This is different. And then it just becomes the job or the car or, the, you know, it, it settles back down, doesn't it? And and, uh, and that's just the truth. I mean, the day after you, you come back from walking on the moon, you know, you got to go mow the lawn. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, you say, see what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you win the NBA championship. You're the best in the, in the world. And you win a gold medal. And then the next day, you, you know, you wake up and go to the gym, I guess. You see? So, so it's like, it, it's getting back into, into that. True? So, so as you're creating, what's, what's going to happen is 
you have to give up this idea that that there is, is, is something out there that is so much significantly better than you could possibly have it right now. It's all happening now. It's all in the now. The now is where you choose what level you're playing at. The now is where you go to, not in the future. You go there now, you be it now. You know, the grass isn't greener over there. The grass is greener where you're standing, where you're watering it, you know. They always say, they go, oh, yeah, Chris, well, the proof is in the pudding. No, it's not. It's in the eating of the pudding. <laughs> it's in the enjoying of what you've created. That's really what it is. It's, it's in the now. <laughs> you know, It's not in this pudding you're going to have. It's not in this grass is greener over there. It's, it's, the, it's here. The grass is. <laughs> the grass isn't greener somewhere else. The grass is green. <laughs> and the proof is in the eating. <laughs> <laughs> unless someone goes and walks their dogma all over your beautiful green grass and and then you're like don't have your dog it's so funny we could just have a whole joke about the grass is greener and the dogma shitting on it <laughs> don't let your dog dogma don't let your dogma crap on my green garden <laughs> the grass is greener where there's no dogma <laughs> that's good quote that <laughs> At least I think it's funny. <laughs> when I wrote the book, uh, I thought it was finished and I sent it in. And I uh, I got the, the, the book back after about three weeks and they required 8,000 edits. It was only a 50,000 word book. So they required 8,000 edits. It's like 16% of the book needed rewritten. Wild, wild. And, 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 uh, and I did not like it. I did not like it and I sent it back and, they, and I did not enjoy the editing process. But I think it's a it's a very good uh, metaphor for for life is that when you really put something out there or you go for something and it can be judged, it probably will be. Does that make sense? When you do something new, you're probably going to be terrible at it. Right. I didn't finish high school. At university, I took uh, uh, mostly, I studied things that were math-based, economics, finance. I have, mo uh, there's many people on my team, English is their second language, and they spell check my writing. <laughs> See, when you're creating something that is absolutely new, by the way, Who's creating something that is absolute, like that, that they've not done before? Who is, who, can I just ask, why are you, are you on the edge of something you haven't done before? It is 100% likely that you're about to get some feedback. True. And the feedback has nothing to do with you as a person. It has to do with you or your ability to complete it. It has to do with the truth. It has to do with the truth. See, what I sat with is I realized the truth is I haven't mastered writing. It wasn't that I was a bad person. It wasn't that this, it wasn't that. It was that I hadn't mastered that. It's to be expected. That when you're on the edge of a new creation, you're creating a new relationship. If you're creating a family, if you're creating a new healthy body, it is expected that you don't know everything that's there, but also that you have everything inside of you to stay in the end result of that creation and see it through. So there I was doing more reading of the revision than of the book 
taking their feedback on, writing it, all of these things, giving it back. And I thought, yes, about a month later, I send it back in. I say, good, done. 3,000 edits came back, including edits to what I thought I'd edited. And back and forth it went and back and forth. And this chapter sucks and take this out and put this in and back and forth and back and forth. And then we ended up with a masterpiece. Nine months. Then we ended up with a masterpiece. Does that make sense? Chris, you know, like, you know, I wish I was as good at you at webinars. I wish I was good at you at videos. You know, when we total up, how many of those I've done? It, it's, it's like 6,000. I started doing webinars in 2010. It's, it's insane. And, and so, so just, just here's, I want you to really hear this. When you're creating, you're going to get feedback when it's something you haven't created before. True? And that feedback has nothing to do with you. It's just you having your human experience wanting to go and do it. Let me put it a different way. Imagine you just knew how to do everything. Imagine you just knew how to do everything. One, two, three people straight away wrote in boring, four boring, five, ah. Think about this for a second. Imagine just everything, you, you, you know, you didn't have to figure anything out. So many of you are typing in that that's something you wouldn't want, eh? Because it's true. So think about this. What if this is actually what life is about? Going for things and figuring them out. What if getting it wrong was just how we chose life to be? What if, if we just knew how to do everything and we just did it and it turned out and then we would do this and then it worked and then it worked, that we would start searching for something that we hadn't done before? What if that was true? How would you orient your life if you just knew your life was about you, you know, going for things you don't know how to do and you're going to trust yourself and go for it anyway and figure it out and it's just one big game full of feedback of what you don't know yet. Doesn't it feel right? Doesn't it feel right? But then what's that other part of us that kind of lies in our, you know, like, doesn't it feel right? Doesn't it just feel right that, that that's what we're here to do is go for things that, that excite us, that we love, that doesn't change who we are. And as we go for them, uh, we have to figure things out and work it out. And it's a big fun adventure. And there's nothing really that meaningful. That's the most meaningful. Once we figure it out, we get to create it and we get to enjoy it for a bit. But we feel the same as we did before. And then we think, well, now what would I like to try to figure out and create and go for, whether that's a happy marriage or a great family or a beautiful garden or a relaxing, fun life or sitting at the beach or surfing every day or, or a huge empire or money or an investment portfolio or or a business, well, you know, imagine if that's what it was. How would life be? And just sit with that for a second. How would life be if that was it? And so now back to the now back to the babies. Now back to the babies. And remember, you're there, you're there in the group of babies. I just want you for a minute just to imagine you're like doing a presentation to these babies. And so you're there, just imagine it. You're there. There's all these beautiful babies and you can see your one there. So like I'm looking at them all and then there's this like really good looking redheaded one, uh, you know, down the end. And anyway, there's all these babies and you're there. <laughs> Don't all put a redheaded baby in yours. <laughs> Unless you want to. And, then <laughs> and so there they all are. And now I want you to make up what would you tell them that life's about? What would you tell them that life's about? 
how what would you tell me you, you got a minute right now to 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 tell these to tell these babies what's it, what's life going to be about what are they going to face What is it about? And, and what's true about them? You've got 30 seconds left. What's true about each of them? What are they likely to experience? Why are they here? And just, and just imagine yourself telling them. Really tell, like, you've, you've only got a few more seconds. What is it like? How is it like? What's life like? What's it going to be like? What are you going to face? What are you likely to, to go in? And, and, and it's structure. It's not per Tell them. And that they, the only truth is the now, how you feel now. The now is everything. And you can raise that now to whoever you want it to be. What are, we gonna, what are you going to tell them? Now, as you tell them, I want you to allow yourself, maybe you might want to close your eyes for this, allow yourself to take the position with all the children and receive the truth a second time. Receive the wisdom from everyone who's typed here in the chat, from myself, from the adult version of you, and just become that small baby receiving the truth about how it is. And feel the excitement of, of a new way of living. You don't have to do anything, just allow, just choose to open up and receive all that wisdom as true. Just make it up. What would life be like moving forward if this was how you oriented? What's life about? So when you're ready, you can open your eyes. This feeling now is the feeling of being the predominant creative force in your life. Doesn't it feel good? This is what being the predominant creative force means. Predominant creative force is one of our four core choices. It means you, the creative force, if you choose to feel upset about rejection, that's your creation. If you choose to, to take time out, that's your creation. If you choose to feel rich and abundant, it's your creation. The predominant creative force means you're the main one. You're the main creative force, but it doesn't mean you're not going to have a book editor tell you that you're not a great writer yet. You're the predominant creative force, but it doesn't mean that you walk up to that attractive person and they just say, oh, yes, I want to marry you. You're still the predominant creative force, but it doesn't mean that there aren't other forces out there. It's how you take that feedback and keep creating. 
Karen's joking me. She says, what? Bummer. Imagine how boring life would be if we just controlled everyone. Hey, I know she's joking. But um, how boring would it be, wouldn't it, if, if there was no feedback, if we just every time won? We want to, we want a little, we want to learn, we want to go to the next level, true. So, so this is what me, uh, when you do your true choice about I'm the predominant creative force, it isn't I get it the right the first time every time. It isn't I'm going to avoid any rejection. It isn't uh i'm perfect it's not this is you with the predominant creative force you receive the feedback your current reality moves and you, and you keep going and this is such a such an important point as you start here on your journey you have your cr and your dr dr stands for desired reality and what happens is every every current reality Every current reality is just a smaller version of the desired reality. Every current reality is just a earlier version of that desired reality. Does that make sense? I'm going to put something. Every earlier current reality, like a telescope lens, that is just like a lens looking out, where it's you here with your little eyeball, it's just a lens. And so you will move from this reality, and then you'll be here. And each one is just an earlier version. But sometimes these realities don't look connected. Unhappy in a relationship. Desired reality, happy in a relationship. Divorce, sad, well, I always say sad. Divorce is this current reality. Divorce doesn't look like it's moving towards there. Uh, lonely or, you know, single. Dating. Happy relationship. But this reality doesn't realize that's moving it forward. Same with unhappy with money. Gets fired. You know? Uh, starts a business, struggles, rich. Do you see? Do you see how the the do you see how the creation? It doesn't look like the creation's coming through, but it is. It is because because this the the you know unhappy you had to get fired had to lose that to get that. And, and so the key is. You just have this person here calling back and telling you what to do next. Now, just go do now and now. And all you do is you kind of follow the cookie crumbs. But you stay in the same loving energy so that your identity is equal. You stay in the same place. And this future you is calling you back, but you're energetically in alignment and you're just trusting and you're just following and you're just trusting and following and going and trusting and following and going. And next step, next step, next step, trusting and following and going. And somehow, somehow it ends up where you want to be. But what we always do is that we make this different to this. 
And then our self-conscious gets in the way of all this magic. You see, the self-conscious gets in the way of all the magic.